you guys want to know a little quick side hustle to do you're not you're not going to become rich on this it's literally just to make some extra cash or you know, like i know a lot of retired guys do this um obviously they're older i'm not talking about the new young guys I'm talking about the older generation um go to your your local dump now i understand not everyone can do this that's fine but i want you to go to the local dump and you can pick out heavy pieces of metal. Now there's a couple things here you can do. Go find some old rotors. Obviously you can collect the copper. You can collect the brass. Hey look, a Tesla just blew a stop sign. If it's, if it's not Teslas and BMWs, it's someone driving a Prius. Typically it's a, an electric car. They just have no concept of what the road is. That'd be my seatbelt light going off. Um, so when you're at the dump, go to the metal pile. You can find um, really good looking bikes. You could fix up bikes, resell them. People throw things that are perfectly fine away. Uh, people at my dump throw away perfectly good working lawn mowers because the gas goes bad and they don't feel like trying to figure out how to start it. Um, they don't know you can just dump it out, throw a new spark plug in there and Bob's your uncle. You can collect every time you go there. Maybe you collect, you know, you throw a bunch of rotors in your truck. Like you have to go to the dump to throw your trash away anyways, if you have a regular town dump. So collect a bunch of rotors. And I say rotors because they're heavy. So usually you're gonna have like your crap, thin, like mixed metal. And then you'll have a pile with like heavy duty cast iron or like number five steel that's super heavy duty. And you can literally just like my, at least my dump, uh, and I know a bunch of other dumps, they don't really care. As long as you're not, as long as you're not like causing a ruckus and you're not taking out saws to try to cut stuff and whatnot, um, most of the time they, they don't really care. So I'd recommend, or if you're, if you're a crafty, I've seen people take, uh, you know, old car rotors. And I was thinking about rotors because I just saw a pile of them. And they're, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 pounds a piece. Like they're, they're no, they're not 40. They're probably 30, maybe 25 to 30 pounds for a rotor. And like it adds up. You bring it to the scrap metal yard and, you know, you, I, I don't even know what it is now. I think it's 200, maybe 225 bucks a ton for those things. It adds up quick. Every time you go to the dump, grab a couple of them. All of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, and stack them at your house or um, batteries. You know, batteries have lead in them. You can, you can get, what is it? Uh, last time I checked, I think it was like 70 cents a pound for a battery. And you gotta think batteries are, I don't know, seven, eight, 10 pounds, depending on the size of the battery, obviously. So all of a sudden that adds up. Um, I've picked out catalytic converters, which I mean, Arguably, if you wanna if you wanna cut them open and collect the metal, then you're talking you know six, seven, eight hundred bucks for a catalytic converter. But if you just turn it in, you get like eighty bucks. Um, stainless steel, stainless steel's a fortune right now. Um, I actually don't know what it's going for though, but it's way higher than regular metal. Um, I have a actually I gotta go cut it up right now. I have a whole spool of, I got a massive spool of copper. Um, hey look, there's a dead squirrel in the road. I have a huge, huge spool of, uh, I found out it was AC condensing line. Um, and coppers, I don't know, four, it's a, little, it's a little over four bucks. And there's gonna be a huge shortage, there's already a huge shortage of it because people don't, um, for some reason, they don't pull the copper out of the dump and refine it, which seems idiotic. I'm not really sure why. Um, brass, uh, I think last time I looked, brass was two or three bucks a pound. You know, like I got a bunch of these, these copper clips. Now I could actually use these at work, but I don't, I don't do a lot of plumbing, but it's like, all right, so I have a couple buckets. Uh, it's got a, it's got a 
uh, this is copper, copper screw. Uh, it's bright, there's no, it's perfectly good copper. All right, so I'm just gonna throw it in my copper pile. I have a couple, you know, people throw away maybe old trash bins. This is, the, this is how I do it. People throw away old trash bins that maybe don't latch properly or whatever. Drill a bunch of holes in the bottom of it, right? So the water drips out. And then you have one with all your wire. You have one with all your brass. You have one with all your copper. All of a sudden, like, you fill, you know, I think wire is a dollar a pound. Copper, obviously, if you went through and actually stripped, um, if you actually stripped it and you had, you know, bare bright copper, you'd have a lot more. But it, it obviously it takes time. But guys, I, I did this, I did this kind of stuff when I had no money. Um, and I did it for years. I actually had the town called me a couple times and they couldn't do anything about it. But the neighbors were calling because I, I literally had like a mountain of, of metal at my house. And I was doing two or three trips a week, making, you know, anywhere from 400 to a thousand bucks a week, just bringing the, you know, recycled products up to, uh, I was going to Brockton. If any of you guys know where Brockton, Massachusetts is, I was going up to Spiegel Scrap or Eco Recycling. Um, it's my buddy's dad's place. Um, little background story, just so you guys have an idea of how much money is in this. Um, the owner of Eco Recycling, really, really interesting guy. He, uh, I believe he dropped out of a parochial school um, at 14. When I met him, he looked like Professor Xavier. Bald head, sharp. The guy was sharp as a tack. Brilliant. He dropped out of he dropped out of regular public schools. Um, worked a job and saved up enough money and then bought this piece of property and started doing scrap metal. He is he is so many times over a multimillionaire. It's it's ridiculous. Lives in a mansion. Um, I'm not going to tell you what town he lives in, but it's not, I can tell you this is not in Brockton. Okay. Um, it's a very, very nice town in Massachusetts and his house probably in today's market, I would say it would probably sell for like 1.2 million, has no debt, has no college debt, has no student loans, drives in, you know, drives a nice car and he, all he does is do scrap metal. Recently, when I was in, well, I can't say recently, I guess it was, it was the last, uh, February 4th, I think it was February 4th, sorry, December 4th of 2021, we had to, we went to my wife's cousin's wedding in Key West, and then we spent a couple of days there, and then we spent a week in Naples, and when I was in Naples, um, twice now? Uh, no, maybe only once. Um, I met two guys. They fly private. So they are the pilots, I should say, of a Learjet. And they're from Canada. And I'm like, well, Canada's locked down. How did you guys get in here? He goes, well, yeah, it's locked down for like normal people, but not for billionaires that have their own jet. I'm like, okay, tell me more. He goes, yeah, we just, uh, you know, um, my boss just... Says like, hey, we're going to the States. His boss, um, similar story. Um, you know, worked and worked and worked in Canada, bought a small uh a small I'm gonna say scrapyard, right, in Canada, ended up buying like five or six of them, is now the largest scrap metal dealer in Canada you know, over his over his lifetime, because it takes a lot of money to accumulate this kind of stuff. Um, multi-billionaire, huge, massive billionaire. Uh, I think he opened up a refinery, uh, in the United States. Um, and because they're Canadian citizens and they have their own jet, they don't have to, they don't have to go through customs. There is no TSA check-in. You go to the runway in your Escalade, you jump in the, in the jet and you take off. You're not getting intercepted by Interpol, nothing like that whatsoever. And, they literally just like, they land in all these crazy exotic destinations. They were in uh, Naples uh, for two weeks. 
The pilots get to do whatever they want. They're compensated for their stay. And they literally only fly this guy and his family around the world. And that's all they do. And they just go on constant vacations. And they're Canadian. They weren't allowed to be in the United States. But because of the guy's status and wealth, you can pretty much do what you want. Laws are, and I know this is kind of controversial because Andrew Tate says this all the time. Um, but guys, it's true. Like laws are only designed for poor and middle class people. Once you reach a certain status, the law, the laws are bendable. Um, because like money and m money can go a far way, and if you have like unlimited resources, it really doesn't matter. My point to that is that you can start off literally just by um, uh, just doing very little. I, you know what? I'm just gonna sh I'm gonna show you. Let's go. Um, all right, here we go. So this this is AC line, uh, and it was just at a pile in the dump. There's I don't know 50, 60 pounds here. Um, now I gotta I just gotta cut this off with a razor blade. But you can see it's just it's just copper lining, right? Like, and we have a national shortage of copper because all of, all of these stupid electric cars all have copper in them. That's what we use to make electronics. And then silver is like the little connection points because solder is obviously like rust and corrodes and silver doesn't. Gold's, gold's too expensive. Um, here's another box, right? Here's a box I found at the dump last week. I actually just have to put it in my bin over there that has a bunch of, never mind my trash. Um, but yeah, I, I gotta just kind of throw this in the bin, but there's, I don't know, maybe 40 pounds of wire there. It's like, all right, well... I don't know, 40 times, 40 times a dollar. It's at least a dollar for the wire is 40 bucks. And then once I strip all this stuff, there's like another 150 bucks. It just, it adds up. It's, it's crazy. And it's like, all right, well, I go to the dump because uh, it's, I don't know, a quarter of a mile from my house. So I just go there sometimes once a day. I throw my trash from my truck away and... I mean, I constantly have trash in my truck, you can see, just because it's constant, constantly working. It works seven days a week, but it's like, guys, it's just a little extra cash. Just a little bit extra cash. And I have other, I have other buckets, but I'm not gonna show you guys. Full of copper, like trash barrels, full of copper. And it adds up, I, 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 I can't. And I put it in the trash barrels because there's only there's only so much space, right, that I can put stuff in my truck, right? Because the you have to figure the bed's only two feet high. If you put them in trash barrels, now you're now you're at the top of the cab, and you have uh, more cubic space without crap like falling out onto the highway. Because I live on uh, I live on Cape Cod, and it takes it takes me I think an hour and ten minutes to get to the scrapyard to get to Brockton because it's. There's just no easy way of getting there. It's you go up Route Three, then you go down 106 through the middle of nowhere, Pembroke, and then you go through what is it, Hal is it Halifax, and then you end up in the butt crack of Massachusetts, and uh, yeah, then you're there. But the guys there at um, I, I I stopped going to Spiegel Scrap a long time ago. Um, Nah, they were kind of they were kind of ripped me off a little bit, but uh, I didn't really like the pricing. I got better pricing over at um, Eco, and you know I ended up doing some work for the for the old man. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to support his business. He supported mine, kind of thing. That's what you do. You it kind of kind of goes around hand in hand. But um, guys, it's an easy side hustle, um, and also if you if you don't want to collect scrap metal, if you're crafty. You can make things out of. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example, right? Because I'll bring over to my I'll bring over to my barrel. All right, so this thing is a 275 gallon barrel that I use to have bonfires. You guys will see it in my other videos. Here's just my pile of wood. So when I get wood from customers' homes, 
I don't feel like paying to dispose of it. I just burn it for free myself. Genius, right? But people are taking these and they're carving like um, with like a metal, with a metal grinder. They're carving shapes in them, like the picture of Cape Cod, you know, with the big arm. There's anything. You can carve anything you want into these things. I've had this out here for going on five years. Um, and they last forever. So people are carving like images in them and selling them. And then they're selling them for like 300 bucks. Now I, I charged the guy a thousand bucks just to get it out of his house after draining it, draining out all the oil, it's hazardous waste, cleaning it all out. And then I cut half of it apart and I threw the half, half of it in the dump for free. And then I kept the other half. This is before I realized that I can make money doing this. Um, and now I use it for my fire pit and I save, you know, a good amount of money doing it. The, uh, but you could cut shapes out of it. People want to make swords. They want to make all sorts of different things. And you can use it doing, you know, heavy duty metal. You could sell it on Etsy. You could, um, I'm trying to think. We have so much artistic stuff on this little island. I know, like, the Cape Cod symbol is... Uh, uh, pretty big people like looking at Cape Cod or signs it could say Nantucket it could you can make a sign that says Chicago it could say you know Washington it could say um I don't know DeSantis it could say whatever you wanted to say but you could make my you can make signs um out of metal you know if you were crafty enough and you could sell them on Etsy and you can make a good amount of money oh perfect example right so I have this I pulled this out of the dump. It's just brass. Not all of it. Right? Uh, this is galvanized. I got a piece of copper right here, but copper is more valuable than brass, so they'll just give me the brass price, but I got to take off, like, this little aluminum clip, this little piece of steel right here, and it's like... So, like, I have another bucket just for scrap. Kaka. So. All right, guys. I, I got to let you go. I, I have so much cleanup work to do. I've been out straight... I'm working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, I'm trying to finish my addition at my house and uh, just working on everyone else's house. It's been constant. So I wish you guys all the best and uh, I'm out.